Hey, family, welcome to Wednesday Night Service. It's so good to see you. This is our last Wednesday night of 2021. Some of you are excited. Some of you are sad. But listen, I can't wait to see what God is going to do in 22. Listen, if you're watching right now, do me a favor. Like, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe so you can keep up with everything we're doing here at the Family of Champions. I'm excited about the word tonight because I believe what God is going to do is going to encourage us in 21 to carry us into 22 and speak directly to what we're going to deal with and how he's going to use us in 2022. So I thank God for what he's going to do. Before we get into the word, let us worship our Lord. Let's give him adoration. Let's give him love. Let's give him thanks. Let's worship. Well, it's time to worship again, everybody. Come on. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Come on, put those hands together wherever you're watching from. Invite somebody. Tell them. Say times to worship. Here we go. Come on. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Yeah. Come on, church. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is sure. We sing to the God always makes a way. Why? Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones, rolling stones away. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. No, we shout out. Shout. Here we go. We were the bed, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. You say it. We were the bed, and now we're royalty. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely, surely in this place. Say it again. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's joy when you're in the family of faith. There's joy being a part of God's house. God, we love you with all our heart. Thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you for carrying us all the way. Thank you for being a promise keeper. Thank you for touching us, Lord God, when we need it most. Thank you for taking the fear and the anxiety away. Thank you for taking it all as we cast our care on you. We cast our care. We cast our care. We cast our care. We cast our care on you because we know that you care for us. And we declare that you're great. Great and mighty is our God. Great are you, Lord. Let's sing. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Yeah. Great. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great Lord, come on, church. Bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Yeah. Great are you, Lord. It's your
deserve it, God. We pour it out to you. We pour it out to you. Hey, we pour it out to you. We pour it out to you. We pour it out to you. Yes. We pour it out to you. Wherever you are, wherever you are, tell him. I pour it out to you. I pour it out to you. I pour it out to you. your breath in our lungs so we pour it out to you you it's your breath in our lungs so we walk with you talk with you it's your breath our lungs so we pour it out to you God we hold nothing back from you withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing God stay right there say I pour it out to you pour it out to you I pour it out to you pour it out to you I pour it out to you pour it out to you I pour it out to you God, we give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise. We ask, God, that you would prepare our hearts and minds for your word, God. Don't let anything distract us or derail us, Lord, from focusing on you, what you are doing and what you have to say. So, Lord, we ask right now that you would use the Holy Spirit to bring everything to remembrance that you will say so that we can be the people you have called us to be. Give us ears to hear, give us eyes to see so that we can be transformed into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Family, this is, this is the last Wednesday of 2021. And the word today is after this. Many of us have been sitting at home. We've been wondering after what we've experienced in 2021, what's going to happen after this? Some of us are in great anticipation of what God might do. Some of us are hesitant to see what might happen because in 2020, we thought this was going to be over and it seems like it's still here. What in the world is going to happen in 2022? And God's word to us is after this. And in 1 Peter chapter 5, the word of God says this. It says, after you have suffered a little while, that's the reason to shout right there, he himself will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. I'm going to say this one more time. Pastor JP, after what we've experienced in 2021, what do we do? The word of God says, after this. After what, Pastor JP? After you have suffered for a little while, he himself will restore you. Someone's at home right now. That's the reason to shout. That's the reason to use an emoji. Listen, after all that you've gone through in 2021, after all of the trials, after all the tribulation, after all the obstacles, after all the pain, after all the sorrow, after all the grief, God says, listen, I know my people are suffering, but after you suffered for a little while, I, God, he says, I myself, God himself will restore us. And he's saying this in the context of believers, but he's not just talking to one church. He's not just talking to one group of believers. He's literally talking to believers around the world. And he says in, in 1 Peter chapter 9, section B, he says this. He says, because the family of believers are going through the same types of suffering throughout the world. Stay there. It, it, it's sometimes we can be ashamed. Paul says, don't be ashamed of the gospel. But sometimes as believers, as we hold up the name of Jesus Christ and we stand firm on God's word and his promises and our life looks like and appears because we are going through something, looks like we are experiencing all kinds of suffering, the world would say, well, where's your God now? And God says, listen, as a believer, as my son, as my daughter, as my child, it doesn't exempt you from suffering, 
But after you do suffer, I'm the one who will restore you. Is anybody besides me going through suffering this year? Anybody besides me go through obstacles, trials, tests, grief, pain, sorrow? And God says to us as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, in the middle of our suffering and what we've experienced, he promises that he will step into it and he will restore us. So family, I don't know what you've experienced this year. I don't know what obstacles are in front of you. I don't know how much suffering you've experienced, but God says we can have hope because he himself will restore us. There are some people in the chat right now and halfway through this year you were suffering and now you've, you've already experienced the restoring hand of God. Why don't you share your testimony? Why don't you share some emojis? Why don't you encourage somebody? Because the same God that, that restored you is the same God that will restore us. God says, after you've suffered for a little while, I'll give you hope because I will restore you. But Pastor JP, how is he going to restore us? What does God do? Well, let, well, let's keep reading. Let's go, keep reading. Go to verse 6. Verse 6 in 1 Peter chapter 5 says this. Humble yourselves. Therefore, watch this, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up, watch this, in due time. So, Pastor JP, how is it that God, watch this, he says, I must humble myself, that's, that's half of our problems right there, under God's mighty hand, because he will lift us up in due time. Then he says, and while you're waiting, Cast all of your cares on him because he cares for you. That's how much God loves you. He says that after you suffered for a little while, watch this, that if we humble ourselves at the appropriate time, he will lift you up. But in order for him to lift you up at the appropriate time, we must first humble ourselves. Stay with me. So in order to experience God's restoring hand, you and I can't be proud. In order for us to experience God's restoration, God lifting us up, he says he shows favor to those who are humble. If we want to experience the power of God, we must be humble. It's interesting because when God says that we must be humble, it means that whatever your title is, you have to lay it at his feet. Whatever accomplishments you have, you have to lay it at his feet. Whatever um, your bank account looks like, you got to lay it at his feet. No matter how much your business may be thriving, you have to lay it at his feet. It's amazing because Jairus was a synagogue ruler, and even he, as esteemed as he was, in front of crowds of people who were watching Jesus, he had to lay his title down at the feet of Jesus. So in order to be restored, we must be humble because God favors the humble. In fact, the Word of God also says that he who, watch this, exalts themselves will be humbled, but he who humbles themselves will be exalted. And it's interesting because God is using two terms that are, that are in the same passage. He says that we must be humble, listen, and we will be exalted, but he's the one who will lift, 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 to lift you up literally means that he will exalt you. To lift you up means that God will, he will push you through the ranks. And if somebody who's watching right now, and you may be waiting on a promotion, you may be waiting on a raise, you may be, you know, waiting on, on God to do something more in your career. And God says, listen, after you suffer for a little while, if you humble yourself and realize that I'm the God who restores and not only am I the God who restores, but I restore you by lifting you up. You realize that as I humble myself, God is the one who will exalt me. God's the one who will give me the promotion. God's the one that will give me the raise. God is the one that will give me the blessing. God's the one who will lift me up through the ranks. It looked like I suffered for a while. But God is so good, and he's a restorer, that he will use his mighty hand to lift me up. But the promotion... Me being lifted up is contingent upon me being humble. God says that he lifts up 
those who have suffered when they're humble. You know, I was talking to someone recently. They said, you know, God never puts more on us than we, he never, he'll, you know, you know, he'll never give you any, he'll never give you more than you can handle. And I said, well, you know what? I don't, I don't know that I agree with that anymore. And, well, what do you mean? Well, if, 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 um, the suffering I always experienced or the trials that I experienced in life or the tribulation that I experienced in life or the test that I experienced in life was, was enough for me to handle, then I would handle it on my own. But I'm, I'm, start, I'm starting to see that there's a, there, there, there may be this idea that God would allow you to experience a certain amount of, of suffering or test or trial or a load that, that makes you have to acknowledge that you cannot make this without God. Pastor, what do you mean? That if, if I could handle it, if he put enough on me that I could handle, I would never be humble enough to realize I cannot lift this without God. God will never put more on you than you can handle. Well, I can't handle it, but I know who can. And it's God's mighty hand that when I'm going through things I can't handle, he's the one who restores me. He's the one who lifts me up. Watch this. Because in order to be humble, it means, to, it means I must bring myself low, right? It, it doesn't mean that I lack confidence. It doesn't mean that, 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 I, that I lack ability. It doesn't mean I have to diminish myself. No, it means I acknowledge that there is a God who is greater than me. His thoughts are not my thoughts. His ways are not my ways. So I don't lean on my own understanding, but I trust him in all of my ways. And so if I trust him in all of my ways, I must humble myself enough to realize the only way I make it through this is with God's restoring hand. And so I humble myself, listen, but, but I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not forced into, into, into this position. It, I must willingly acknowledge that God is greater than me. God is smarter than me, and God knows better than me. And so I trust him, and I place myself in his mighty right hand. Now, when I place my hand in his mighty right hand, he then is in control, and he then can exalt me. Are you still with me? Let's go back to the text. Now, it's interesting because when he says that he will lift me up at the appropriate time, right, um, um, it, it's interesting because one translation says that he will exalt you, another translation says that he will lift you up, but literally it means that at the proper time, right, kairos versus chronos, listen, there is, there's chronological time, right, like you look at your clock, you look at days, you look at weeks, you look at months, you look at calendar years. We're in the last Wednesday of 2021, chronological. But Kairos, listen, is an appointed time. It literally means when God, listen, that this blessing is coming, but you keep looking at the days, you keep looking at the weeks, you keep looking at the months, you're trying to find out what, at what time in this calendar year is God going to do it. God's not worried about your calendar year. God is moving at the appropriate time. What do you mean, Pastor? I mean, at the time that he sees fit. Watch this now, that, that the appropriate time, watch this, you're not going to like me after this, he, he places the blessing on you and exalts you. Maybe he does it when your character has been built up to, with, to, 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 to be able to hold on to the blessing that's coming. See, some of you want to be exalted. Some of you want to move up the ranks, but if he gives it to you now, your character can't keep you where your talent might take you. I got to say that one more time. Your character can't take you or keep you where your, where your talent might take you. What do I mean? I mean, God is so good that he won't bless you with what you're asking for before the time comes because he knows you'll ruin it. And he doesn't want you to ruin it because what he's doing in your life is not just about you. He put his name on it because he put his name on it because somebody else's life is attached to the blessing that's coming. So we have to back up then and trust our lives in God's mighty right hand so he can exalt you at the appropriate time. Somebody's watching right now. You've waited all 2021 for God to move and for God to exalt you, for God to lift you up. But God says, I've been waiting all 2021 for you to humble yourself enough to realize you need character development for me to mold you and shape you to be the man or woman of God I've called you to be so that I can exalt you. You want to be exalted, but you don't want to change. You want to be exalted, but you want, you, you want, me, to be, you want me to be Savior, but you don't, want me to be the, you don't want me to be Lord. You want me to be Savior, deliver you from your trouble, deliver you from your situation, deliver you from the mess, but you don't want me to be Lord over your life, but you want to be exalted. God says, listen, I want to bless you, but my name is on it. I don't, want to, I don't want you to embarrass yourself, and I sure don't want you to embarrass me. 
So what I'm trying to do is shape you and mold you so I can exalt you at the appropriate time. It is God's ability to move and exalt us and bless us because he says, after you've suffered for a little while, he himself will restore you. So Pastor JP, if he says, after I have suffered for a little while and my suffering isn't over, what do I do in the meantime? You ask great questions on a Wednesday night. Now, first thing I must do is I must give it to him. Second thing I must do is I must be vigilant. Where did you see that, Pastor JP? Well, well let's go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, listen, that in, in, in this moment of suffering, while I'm suffering for a little while, while I'm going through what I'm going through for this period of time, for this season, I should, watch this, cast all of my cares on him because he cares for me. Now, stay with me. When he says, cast all of your cares, it's like watching someone with a, with a, uh, going fishing with a line. It means to cast it out, right? But it's, it's not just a picture of, of a fishing line, right? Because it's, it's not just that I'm casting it out, right? Because in order for me, stay with me now, stay with me now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, in order for me to even have enough faith to throw the line, I have to trust that the bait that I have will catch some fish. And so it's not just that, I tr- that, that, that I'm, I'm casting my cares, right? I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there, you know, haphazardly. No, I don't even, I'm not even willing to cast the net unless I trust that the bait that I'm using can hook this fish, right? So when I cast my cares on him, I now have to trust the person I'm casting them to. Now, if I trust God, right, I trust, I trust, I cast my cares on him, because I trust that once I cast it out there, he now has full responsibility for the catch. Stay with me now. Because after I've suffered for a little while, right, he will restore me. But I'll never cast my cares on him unless I trust that he can be responsible to take care of it. Now, some of you have had friends, right, or people in your life that you trusted. And when you, when you, when you gave this assignment to them, they failed you, right? And so, what I don't want us to do is to project the people who have failed us in our lives and project that mentality onto God. So what I do is, listen, when I have enough faith in God, it enables me to cast my care. And God says, listen, while you're in the middle of the struggle, while you're in the middle of the suffering, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to cast that care, hand that care over to me. Let me be responsible for what you're worrying about. Why? Because sometimes while we're suffering, If we don't cast the care, the anxiety that comes with that can destroy us. If I'm suffering and I have no hope, I can become desperate. And when I become desperate, I can become a person who is in despair. And if I'm in despair, Lord knows what I might do. But if I'm in the middle of it, knowing that this is only going to last for a little while, all of the cares and anxieties and worries I have, because I trust the person I'm giving them to, I will cast my cares onto him and let him work it out because I'm only going to suffer for a little while and sooner or later he will restore me. He said, after you have suffered for a little while, he himself will restore you. But I have to be humble enough to cast the care on him and know that God can and will work it out. But not only do I have to cast it on him, give it to him, but I also have to be vigilant. Watch this, because I've learned that in the moments that we, we, we are suffering are the moments in our lives that we're most vulnerable. Go to verse 8. Verse 8 says this. It says, be alert and sober-minded or of sober mind. Your enemy, this is a fight, the devil prowls around, I'm going to stay here for a minute, like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stay right there. Hold on a minute. He says, listen, while you're, while you're suffering, I need you to cast the care on me, watch this, and I need you to be alert. Some of you aren't being alert because you're holding on to the anxiety that you should hand over to God. And because you're not being alert, the enemy is hitting you over the head because he goes to and fro seeking who he may devour. If I hold on to the anxiety and worry, I'm not alert enough to see the attack of the enemy. Watch this. But he says, be alert and of sober mind. For your enemy prowls around, goes around like a roaring lion. Stay right here. 
Now, Job, watch this, when, when Job um, is suffering, a righteous man suffering, the devil comes, the enemy comes, he's having a conversation with God. While he's having this conversation with God, he says, listen, the only reason why Job praises you and he's faithful is because you've blessed him. Uh, 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 Satan, how have I blessed him? You've built a hedge of protection around him. Listen, look how you've blessed him. And I can't come in, right, to touch anything he has. And God tells the devil, well, where, where have you come from? He says, I've just been going, I've been roaming to and fro. Why? Because he sticks to his job description. His job description is to go to and fro seeking who he may devour. But watch this. It says, but he prowls around going to and fro like a roaring lion. Now, watch this. Tell me right now, if in your living room, in your bedroom, whatever room you're in right now, while you're listening to this live stream, what in the world would you do right now if while you're sitting down, a lion walked into the room that you're in right now? That's right. I said it. What would you do right now? If a lion, if a lion came, oh, you wouldn't even see him on the screen anymore. If a lion came into the room, you would, you, you'd lose your mind. You'd be afraid. You think like it's over. You're like, oh my gosh, how in the world am I going to get out of this situation? Right? Because you look, look at us and look at a lion. Now, you, you, would be, you would literally be in fear and trembling because a lion is in front of you. You know that this lion can devour you. You know this lion is stronger than you. You know this lion can destroy you because it's a lion. But the devil is like a roaring lion. What do you mean? He's not a lion. He's not a lion, but he does a lot of lying. Say that one more time. The devil's not a, he's not a lion. But the word of God says he prowls to and fro like a roaring lion. You're afraid of a, a fraud. I wonder how many people all 2021 have been afraid to move out into what God has for you to do what God has called you to do because you're, you're so afraid. You're so, you have so much anxiety because you have not casted the care on him and you're not alert. And the, the, the devil is in your living room. The devil is all in your business. The devil is all in your family. The devil is all in your household and he has you shook because you think he's a lion and he's not a lion, but he does a lot of lying. And he's lied to you about your family. He's lied to you about your gifts. He's lied to you about your dreams. He's lied to you about your self-esteem. He's lied to you about your faith and your trust and your hope in God. And you're shook. All year you've been shook and you have not done anything God has called you to do. Your visions have been on pause. Your dreams have been on pause. All because you think before you is a lion. And he's not a lion. He's lying. He is like. He's a bully. He's a deceiver. And what he does to believers is he deceives us into thinking he has us. And I bind that spirit off us right now. We will not operate in 2022 in a, in a spirit of fear, but we will operate in, in a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. He's not a lion. Be of sober mind. Be alert, he, the word of God says. Watch this. Then he says, he says, resist him. There it is right there in verse 9. Resist him. Watch this. Stand firm. In the faith. Let's stop right there for a minute. He says he, he's, he's going to and fro, seeking who he may devour. Right? Then he says, but do me a favor. Right? When he's doing all of the acting like he's a lion, resist him. There's no, listen, let me tell you right now. There, there is nobody I know, except some of them people in Australia that do, do the animal channels and all that. Right? That, that if the lion was in front of them, they would stand up and try to resist it. If, if I told you right now. If, you, if, if a lion was in here, the camera would be on me right now. The next thing you'll see is this chair spinning. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to resist the lion, but he's not a lion. The word of God says, resist the devil and he must flee. The word of God says, resist him, watch this now, and stand firm. The, the, the word doesn't say that. It says, resist him and stand firm, keep going, in the faith. It is the faith I have in Jesus Christ. It is the faith I have in God that gives me the power, 
that gives me the boldness, that gives me the courage to stand firm and resist the devil because I have faith in my God, because he, is my, he has a mighty hand, he is my defense, he is my fortress, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and my God says, after I've suffered a little while, when this, when this fake line comes in your living room, comes in your room, comes in your family, comes in your business, acting like he's a lion, resist him and stand firm in the faith you have in me, stand on my promises, and move into everything I've called you to be, because at the appointed time, I promise you, I will restore those who are suffering. And I wonder who's watching right now. And you've been suffering all year. And God's word to you is after you have suffered for a little while, after you have suffered in 2021, he will restore you. And while you are waiting on the restoring mighty hand of God, cast your cares on him. Resist this lion, lion, and stand firm in the faith you have in Jesus Christ. I wonder, I wonder what you need to cast on him right now. Is it fear? Is it depression? Is it anxiety? Is it procrastination? Is it laziness? What is it? Is it pride? Arrogance? Is, is it um, low self-esteem? What is it that you need to cast on him? Is it, do, do you need to cast your, your son because you're worried about him? Do you need to cast your daughter because you're worried about them? Do you need to cast your business because you're worried about your business? Do you need to cast yourself because you're worried about you? To him who cares for you, cast it now. What is it? Are you, is anyone bold enough right now to type in the chat what it is they're casting as, as, as a sign of a declaration that I'm casting it right now in the name of Jesus? Cast the care right now. Then he says, I got to stand firm in my faith. I have to stand firm in my faith as I resist the devil. Is there someone watching right now and this year your faith has been shaky? I want to pray with you. I, I want this Wednesday of 2021 to be the day that you rededicated your life, rededicated your faith, rededicated the fact that you're standing firm in your faith in Jesus Christ. I want us to do that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you can repeat after me. I love you. I trust you. I'm casting all of my cares on you because you care for me. Lord, my faith has been shaky. But your word says that if I confess my sin, that you are faithful and just to cleanse me and forgive me of all unrighteousness. All literally means all. Anything I've done, what has caused my faith to, to, to go astray, Lord, you are a restorer. And I ask right now that you would restore the joy of my salvation. Lord, I love you and I thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Family, I pray that you have been blessed. I, I really pray that you have been blessed. The word of God says that after you have suffered for a little while, after you have suffered the storm, after, you have, after you've suffered the test, after all that you've gone through, watch this now, I want you to meet me in 2022. I'm connecting. I'm going to connect this to what God is going to do next time I see you on Wednesday. Watch this. He says, after you have suffered for a little, what do I do next? The first thing you need to do is meet me in 2022, and I'll tell you how we're going to thrive. Family, I love you. I pray that until I see you next time, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, we got praise party. That's right. We got praise party coming. You want to make sure you tune in and watch praise party. We have it at 8 o'clock, right, on all our, social, all our social media platforms. That's on YouTube, Facebook, and the church website. That is at 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time and then also at 10.30 uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Also, we're going to be streaming it literally around the world all day on Pray.com, our new champion partner. Family, if you're going to make a champion decision today, I want you to text the word champion to 833-321-3222. Listen, the next time you see me, it's going to be 2022. So listen, happy new year. I pray that you have a blessed time, you have a safe time, and you enjoy your family because the best is yet to come. See you next time. Happy new year.